Welcome to lecture number six, The Challenge of Being Anonymous, John and Jane Doe Litigation. In this video, we consider another aspect of the difficulty one encounters when trying to remain anonymous. Anonymously complaining about another's wrongful conduct is easy today, given the virtually limitless employee gripe sites, professional service review sites, chat rooms, and other internet forums in which to criticize or accuse others. Anonymously seeking legal redress in court for harms caused by another, however, is not so easy. Most court rules expressly require a complaint to contain, quote, the names of all the parties, end of quote, involved. This has been interpreted to mean that if a plaintiff wants to proceed anonymously, court permission must be obtained. Although courts occasionally allow a plaintiff to adjudicate a lawsuit using a John or Jane Doe description, the circumstances and conditions under which anonymity is permitted varies widely. Oftentimes, the defendant, who is named, objects to the plaintiff proceeding with the litigation anonymously. Defendants often argue that, since they have been publicly accused of wrongdoing, it is only fair that the accuser should have to publicly stand by his or her accusations. In other words, the risk of reputational harm should be shared equally. Defendants also argue they need to know the identity of their accuser in order to properly defend themselves. Anonymity is to preserve a legitimate privacy or other interest or is merely to avoid annoyance and criticism. For example, children or victims of rape or other sexual assault often wish to proceed anonymously to avoid further embarrassment. Whether identification poses a real risk of harm, physical or emotional, to the plaintiff. Whistleblowers or persons who are challenging a law that they have violated often fall in this category. The relative ages of the parties. Children are more likely than not allowed to proceed anonymously. The risk of unfairness to the defendant by allowing the action to proceed anonymously. For example, imagine a situation where the defendant can show that plaintiff has made similar claims before that were false, or that plaintiff is motivated by intent to harm the defendant and that the identity of the plaintiff is necessary for the jury and others to assess the credibility of the plaintiff and the validity of plaintiff's claims. Some courts choose to give great weight to policy considerations, such as the presumption of openness of judicial proceedings. One court, in denying a plaintiff's request to proceed anonymously, noted, quote, those using the courts must be prepared to accept the public scrutiny that is an inherent part of public trials, end of quote. Another policy consideration that many courts give great deference to is the right of a defendant to know who is suing him or her so they can prepare an adequate defense. Another policy consideration is the concern that not allowing anonymity will force some plaintiffs to forego seeking vindication of their rights, thus effectively denying them access to the courts, something we hold dear in our democracy. Consider the following fact scenarios from actual court cases and evaluate whether the Doe plaintiffs should be allowed to proceed anonymously over an objection of the defendant. Fact scenario number one. Three members of an undocumented family file suit under the names of John, Jane, and Junior Doe. They challenge a state statute that denies or removes a driver's license to any person who lacks documents showing citizen status. The state moves to dismiss the complaint unless the plaintiffs are identified. Scenario number two. A married individual files suit challenging whether a state statute requiring convicted sexual offenders, offenders to register on the state sex offender registry applies to him. Scenario number three. Jane Doe, a 16-year-old high school student, sleeps with her then-boyfriend and fellow student Jason Smith. 
Smith secretly records the sexual encounter and circulates the videotape to several of his fellow classmates. One of these students posts the videotape on the Internet. Jane Doe sues Jason Smith, his real name, for intentional infliction of emotional distress and invasion of privacy. Smith requests that the suit be dismissed unless plaintiff uses her real name. Scenario number four. A woman files suit claiming sexual discrimination and coercion against her former landlord and seeks to proceed anonymously, claiming privacy harm to her and her children if she is named. The defendant objects to plaintiffs continuing with the case anonymously and seeks dismissal. We will learn the outcome of each of these real cases in class and discuss the court's reasoning. The next video addresses yet another aspect of the challenge of remaining anonymous in our information age, the increasing use of biometrics.